Well, Bob, what, is this true that you're going to be in, on with Colbert? I've already been on with him. Oh, you have? How did it go? Wonderful. And uh, he's going to do something here. I don't know. It's in May. Um, let me look at my schedule here. He wants me. Uh, maybe it's June. Let me see here. Um, well, I was already on the program. You're supposed to come back to me. Maybe it's in June. All right, fine. Well, anyway, I'm glad, I'm glad it went He's well. He's going to do something else with me. You know, Stan, I do so many programs, I can't even keep up with it. I know. Well, you're doing a great job, and I appreciate the fact that you've got the time to do it, because I sure don't. Well, anyway, let's go to Heinrich, who's calling us from uh, New England. Hi, Heinrich. How are you doing? Yes, hello. How are you doing? i got a quest, couple of questions for Mr. Chapman. Okay, you go right ahead. Okay, all right. One is this. Um, I was told by somebody, because you're an expert at this, that there, there are some laws um, in Europe compared to here and a couple of countries where insider trading is not. Uh, is it, is it, uh, that's what I want you to correct, because you know about this. Is it true that there are... Uh, Insider trading, in other words, having information about stocks or certain things, in some European countries is not against the law as like here in the United States, or is that a totally a falsehood? That's for one. Well, um, I don't know of any place that it's permissible. Um, okay. I do know that George Soros uh, was convicted of using inside information and manipulating the stock market in France, and he was convicted, and he appealed to the French Supreme Court, we'll call it, and he lost. Right. And uh, he paid a very large fine, I forget what it was. And then just recently, he got grabbed for the same thing in Hungary and paid a very large fine. Ooh. But beyond that, and? I just, uh, pardon me? No, I said, uh, again, I'm saying in two countries, I'm saying he had convicted in France, and you're telling me he did it in uh in Hungary. Somebody also throwing out uh, Malaysia, too. Is that true? Don't know that. But I don't I, know I, that. I, and I don't I, know which nations where that's permissible. Okay. I don't think, that, I don't think there's any that are. I mean, it, it flies in the face of reality. But of course, uh, actually, Soros was involved with the manipulation and, uh, of, uh, you know, of, of the uh, of the currency over there in Malaysia some years ago. He he made out like a bandit there. But anything else, Hybrid? All right, yeah, a couple other things. Okay. Um, the other thing is this. Somebody also said, the person said, that when it comes to the tax rates for corporations, that in some, not all, but in some European countries, it's a little bit less, that is for a corporation, though, than in the U.S. Or like, for instance, with that guy Bono, he's a member of the Council of Foreign Relations, but you don't have to be a member of the Council of Foreign Relations. He incorporated his ban U2 in the Netherlands as opposed to uh, Ireland, which is where he's from. And I'm just wondering... Well, Ireland, you... Ireland had very low rates, and obviously the Netherlands, Netherlands have uh, lowered theirs. I think I, I can throw out a figure here of an average of around 17% corporate taxation. Uh, in the United States, it runs 50, 33 to 35. And one of the loopholes oh, okay. that, they, that they've allowed to stay in place is the loophole that allows transnationals to do business, make profits. Hold that thought. Keep... Hold that thought. We'll be right okay. back. Well, this is Dr. Stan. Our telephone number is one triple eight two four liberty one triple eight two four liberty or four six four eight two nine five. We've got Heinrich calling us from New England, asking about a corporate taxation in other countries. And of course, Bob is saying that in many places in Europe, why they have lower corporate taxes than we do here. But they, of course, one of the things that they have is if you are an American corporation and you open up your factories in India or in China, 
you don't have to pay any American taxes. You may get taxed overseas, but many of these countries have very low tax rates for American corporations because they want our jobs. They want our manufacturing, I, I, and so do we. We want to send our manufacturing overseas because they want to lower the living standards of the American people. That's what globalism is really all about and why they are so intent upon encouraging our corporations to move overseas, where if you are an American corporation and you go overseas, you don't don't have to pay any American taxes, and you don't have to put up with the unions here. And that's why. Yeah, to bust the, the bust up the white uh, middle class. Right, yeah, of course, absolutely. But I wouldn't think about living in China and in India or Nigeria. No, or but you're not a corporation. Oh, true. But even if I did own a corporation, I'd live in Scandinavia. Or all right, fine. I, mean, right. I would not go to. All right. There. But all right. But okay. So so apparently, all right, because you're an expert in this. I'm talking to Mr. Chapman now. Um, so apparently, though, know, where does somebody find out this information? Like, is it a special website that deals with, you know, uh, tax rates in Europe? Like, for instance, when it comes to, or it's 17 percent. When it comes to personal taxes, as far as uh, income, does that also vary? Like, let's say between, um, you know, Denmark compared to the Netherlands, compared to Germany, compared, to, you know, and if somebody is there a website or something that gives that information? Where would they go or who would they consult or what book? I'm just curious because you're an expert in a lot of this stuff. Well, individual tax rates in Europe okay. run around 45 to 60 percent. Yeah, that's about And it varies, saying. you know, from country to country. And then I think they harmonize the VAT, and I'll guess that somewhere around 17 to 19 percent. Uh, now, what is and the I VAT? Think, what is uh, the it's VAT? a value-added tax. Value-added you know, tax. All the taxes okay. that you pay going through the process, well, they add okay. that on top of it. All right, yeah, I just It's know brutal. Okay. Yeah, and, and the value-added tax is one of the worst possible taxes, and that's why the corporations are able to get low corporate rates. And so here we are in America. We have higher rates. The loophole that was created so that transnationals could keep their profits, say, in the Cayman Islands, and pay 2%, that was to offset the amount of taxes that they had to pay, which is essentially double what you would say in Ireland or the Netherlands. Right, and, but there's a lot. All right, no, go ahead. But there's a lot of wealthy and, people. And, oh, wait no, a minute. Sorry, let, me, let me tell you yeah, what they right. did four years ago. Okay. They, they sent in... A, uh, uh, a request for Congress to allow them to bring the money back. And they said that they would create jobs. Okay. So Congress gave them a five and a quarter percent tax rate instead of 33 or 35 to bring the money home. $350 uh -huh. billion. Dollars. Right now there's $700 billion out there. And they want to bring that back in. And Mr. Obama's pounding his chest saying, yeah, we got to bring that money back in. My question is, at what rate? And will they continue to tax at that rate? And, of course, I think the other thing is when they did lower the tax to 5% to bring it back in, they brought it back in there, but they did not uh, you know, invest it in things that produce jobs. That was the lie. They promised they'd bring it back right. in there, that uh, create jobs, and they didn't. Anyway, thanks very much for calling. All right. Okay, I'll go for now. Uh, let's go to Great Jimmy, time. who's calling from New York. Hi, but Jimmy, how are you doing? 